be mm -hmm. with the state because of Jesus. Mm -hmm. If people are willing to do this for a relationship with Jesus, Jesus must have something that's worth holding on to. Mm -hmm. What we need to understand as followers of Christ in this section is that those who live by faith will draw the attack of the enemy. Mm -hmm. You will draw the attack of the enemy. The enemy is not flesh and blood. It is not other religious groups. It is not bosses. It's not family. I know sometimes a family dinner you think it is, but it's not. The enemy is the devil, and those angels which chose to follow him, and he on the past, fell to the earth and were eternally cursed by God. That's our enemy, and they are out to get you if you live by faith. If we live by emotion like the rest of the world, if we live by our own prejudices like the rest of the world, if we live by the success model that has been sold to us, by the United States of America and other Western civilizations, that you are worth how much money you have. If we live by that, you will not be attacked by the enemy. He doesn't need to bother you because you're not doing anything. But the moment you step out of that American mode, the moment you step out of the cultural milieu that we are in and say, I am going to do something for somebody else, even though they can't do anything for me, all of a sudden you start to have problems. Then you find the enemy attacking you. Attacking you through people because that's how he operates. Those of you who were with us six years ago know exactly how that operates with the city council. <laughs> But look today, God's blessing is upon this place. God's promises are beginning to be fulfilled. Because we've been perfectly faithful? No, not this guy. I've whined more than you will ever care to know. <laughs> but because he is faithful. Go ahead. Amen. Go ahead. What's sad is, for those who have much to lose, Sometimes a choice to lose it is very difficult. When we were young and I had brown hair and blue eyes that weren't bloodshot, when we were young and I could eat anything I want, stay up as long as I want, do anything I want, and never have any consequences to my health. When we were young, living in a little tiny rented apartment that was the size of most of our shoes. When we were young and literally had no, no nickels to rub together. Okay. My wife and I could sacrifice because we had nothing to lose. Several years ago, God gave us the opportunity to move three children into the inner city. Not just to pastor, but to live. And in those years, discussions were had with our relatives, and with our friends, about how crazy we were. On more than one occasion, on family walks, we would walk up on dead bodies. More than one occasion, we'd be standing outside at 2 in the morning with the rest of the neighbors watching the police cars come as different situations happened on the walk. Yeah. We had a lot to lose. But we had nothing to lose compared to the joy of knowing Jesus and the honor of raising kids where God has to raise them. Mm -hmm. What do you have to lose today? Mm -hmm. Is it your reputation? Believe it or not, I have one. Not as bad as I make it sound. <laughs> what do you have to lose? When you start telling people that God loves them even though they are trapped in a homosexual lifestyle and that he can save them and they don't have to somehow change before he accepts them, okay. all of a sudden people don't want to be your friend anymore. Mm -hmm. I know. Mm -hmm. I have lost close ministers' friends simply because I refuse to accept some kind of party line that says that you have to have all your problems fixed before Jesus will take you. Mm -hmm. 
Hear me, if you're here this morning, you're an alcoholic, well, welcome to the club, number one. If you're a drug addict, welcome to the club, number one, because I'd be dead without Jesus. Mm-hmm. You don't have to be fixed before he'll take you. You're involved in some kind of sexual perversion. Okay. You don't have to give it up before Jesus will take you. Are you so greedy that right now you're counting your pennies in the back of your mind? You don't have to change before Jesus will take you. Are you so concerned about what everybody thinks that right now you're worried if there's lint on what you're wearing? You don't have to be up, be finished being uptight before Jesus will save you. Are you so consumed with hatred for another race or another religion or perhaps even me that it just eats away at your bones? You don't have to change before Jesus will save you. Jesus takes broken people and he fixes them. Jesus does not take fixed people because there are none. There are none. If you've got it all together, you are really messed up. Peter and John are in trouble. You don't think we're going back to this, did you? No. (laughs) Because they cared about a man who could give them nothing. Peter and John are being attacked by the religious world because they cared about a man. One of the things that I love about my friends at Tiffany is that they have an absolute passion for the poor. Their home has been a hotel to more people than most of us have even seen. They have lost more money over the years helping people than many of us have probably given to missions. Most of us drive by those men and women standing there sitting on the corner with the will work for food. And make of all the reasons why we should not help them. This couple goes home and gets stuff out of their own home and brings it back and gives it to them. Have they been attacked for it? I can tell you as their friend and their pastor, yes, they have. They have been through trials and tribulations as a result of their willingness to give. Why? Because the enemy of their soul does not want a couple that is willing to step outside the prescribed zone of what the church is allowed to be and say, I don't care. I just love people because Jesus loves people. Has God blessed this couple? Of course. He lets me be their friend. (laughs) (laughs) Let's move on. (laughs) It's verses 13 to 18 that the enemies of Jesus are forced to deal with Jesus mm-hmm. when his followers live by faith. That's why we're attacked. If you're religious, if you're culturally acceptable, if you're willing to come and raise your hands in church but never talk about him outside these walls, then you don't have to worry about being attacked. If you're okay with just playing the part of a Christian on Sunday and looking good, but for the rest of the week hiding him under a bushel, <laughs> then you're okay. Mm. But if you want to follow the prescribed words of Jesus and take that bushel off and put the lamp on a lampstand so it can light the whole room that God has given you, then be prepared because people are going to have to deal with Jesus when they see him in you. People don't mind religion. Religion really is not that big of a deal. We can argue about it. We can analyze it. We can discuss it. We can even accept it or reject it. But when you start talking about a man who came and lived a sinless life and died on a cross, not for his wrong, but for ours, and was perfect, therefore rose from the dead three days later, and now is the king of the universe, and everyone owes their life to him and to no one else, and this same man is coming back on the cloud that he left, and he's going to set up a kingdom where only right will exist, and where only health will exist.